بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا السماء شقت وأذنت لربها وحقت وإذا الأرض مدت وألقت ما فيها وتخلت وأذنت لربها وحقت يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقي فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا وينقلب إلى أهله مسرورا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين I welcome all of you to this first broadcast of Know the Ledge presented by WKTL Radio and Medina Educational Institute with your brother Tawfiq Aziz. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, the purpose of this show will be for us to uh, discuss the problems that we as Muslims face in our daily lives, whether they be personal or social problems, and try to find a solution through the Qur'an and the authentic uh, sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I was thinking that for our first couple of shows, I wanted to talk about something that would help all of us regardless of where we live. Uh, Because we, uh, all of us, uh, every now and then, we have the shaitan whispering in our ears, and we feel afraid of society. We feel afraid of our families, our friends, that what they will say and think and how they will react to us changing to us improving as Muslims, uh, to look like Muslims, to walk like Muslims, to talk like Muslims, to live like Muslims. So we will start today, insha'Allah, with a beautiful advice that was given by the Prophet wasallam to Abdullah ibn Abbas. And this is a hadith that's collected in a tirmidhi and in the musnad of Imam Ahmed. Abdullah ibn Abbas one day was riding on the same animal behind, sitting on the same animal behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya ghulam, O young man, inni u'allimuka kalimat. I shall teach you some words of advice. Ihfadillaha yahfadhka. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Ihfadillaha tajidhu tujahak. Be mindful of Allah and he will, you will find him in front of you. إِذَا سَأَلَتْ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you ask, ask of Allah. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And if you seek help, seek help of Allah. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ Know that if the nation were to gather together to benefit you with anything, it would benefit you only with something that Allah had already prescribed for you. وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ And if the nation were to gather together to harm you with anything, they would harm you only with something Allah had already prescribed for you. رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفِ The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. And in the narration of, collected in the Musnad of Ahmed, uh, it reads, اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ أَمَامَكَ Be mindful of Allah, you will find him before you. تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Get to know Allah in prosperity and He will know you in adversity. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ Know that what has passed you by was not going to befall you. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ 
and that what has befallen you was not going to pass you by. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ And know that victory comes with patience. وَأَنَّ الْفَرَجَ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ And relief with affliction. وَأَنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى And ease with hardship. So we see that this hadith, without a doubt, applies to each and every one of us. Regardless of whether we live in Western countries or we live in Muslim countries. And so insha'Allah, we will go into uh, some details regarding this hadith and try to benefit from them and see how we can apply, apply this in our lives today to try to solve the worries and the problems that we face in our daily lives. So the first thing that the Prophet wasallam said was, اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظْكَ اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ تُجَاهَكَ be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. The overall implication of this advice to all believers is that we must devote all worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the subject of Tawheed, the subject of knowing how to worship Allah alone, understanding the meaning of La ilaha illallah, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, the categories of Tawheed, the different aspects of worship and how to direct them to Allah alone. This is the most important thing in our lives. A lot of times what happens uh, these days, we hear sometimes Muslims complaining against du'at and shuyukh that emphasize on Tawheed. They will come and say, you know, brother, there are so much things happening. Men, women, and children are dying. Women are being raped. Our lands are being looted. We don't have time to talk about Tawheed. That subhanAllah, we don't realize the severeness of our statements. People are saying this out of ignorance, no doubt. That they don't realize that the number one solution to all our problems starts with perfecting our Tawheed. Look at what the Prophet ﷺ said here. Being mindful of Allah. How will you be mindful of Allah without having proper knowledge of Tawheed? You have to know who Allah is, what He, what he asks of us, what He tells us, what He prohibits upon us, how to worship Him, what pleases Him, what makes Him angry. You need to know all of this in order to be mindful of Allah. So if you are mindful of Allah, Allah will protect you. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we are crying for? Protection against our families, our society, other countries that hate us for wanting to be Muslim, that hate us and pre want to prevent us, that try to stop us from improving on ourselves and doing more uh, for our faith. So definitely we need the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to get that protection, we have to be mindful of, the, uh, uh, mindful of Allah so being mindful of Allah means to preserve His limits, uh, to preserve Allah's limits, Allah's rights, Allah's commands and prohibitions. To preserve this is to carry out His orders and keeping away from all of His prohibitions. A person can't go beyond the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let alone indulging in what Allah has prohibited. And whoever is able to fulfill all these obligations Allah praised them in the Qur'an. And, and like for example, Allah said in the Qur'an, هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ This is what you were promised. It is for those uh, most returning to Allah in sincere repentance. And those who preserve their covenant with Allah. مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ who feared the most most gracious in the unseen, in the ghaib, when people, that meaning in this worldly life before seeing and meeting Allah. In this world, of course, we don't see Allah. So without seeing Him, we were able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people were able to fear Allah and brought a heart turned in repentance to Him. The word hafiz in this ayah, has been interpreted to mean by the scholars of tafsir uh, as the one who is mindful of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repents from the sins he commits. So we've been commanded to preserve uh, the salah 
our organs and our chastity. And one of the most important commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that must be guarded, that must be preserved is the salah, the prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands its preservation. There are many ayat, ayat that we can give. But for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاتِ الْوُسْطَى وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Guard strictly the obligatory salawat, the five daily prayers, especially the middle salah, which, is referred, which, is, which uh, refers to salat al-asr, and stand before Allah with obedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who guard these prayers. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ and those who guard their salah well. In addition with regard to preservation of salah, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is a hadith collected in the Musnad of Ahmed, فَإِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ يَقُولُ Indeed, your Lord says, مَنْ صَلَّ الصَّلَاةَ لِوَقْتِهَا Whoever prays the prayer in its time, وَحَافَظَ عَلَيْهَا And is constant in that. يُضَيِّعْهَا اسْتِخْفَافًا بِحَقِّهَا And does not neglect them, nor treat their lights, light, rights lightly. فَلَهُ عَلَيَّ أَهْدٌ أَنْ أُدْخِلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Then he has a guarantee from me that I will enter him into paradise. So we see clearly the virtue or the importance of guarding our salawat, praying them on time, and being constant in our offering them in, its prop, in their proper times. Then Allah, it is a covenant from Allah that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will allow us to enter paradise. And as the hadith and, and, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said the opposite, the one who fails to guard the salawat, uh, to pray in its proper time, then Allah has said, فَلَا عَهْدَ لَهُ عَلَيَّ Then the, such a person has no such covenant from me. So this covenant, this guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be protected and to be forgiven and to be uh, granted paradise, this is only a, a, a guarantee upon those who guard their salawat and they offer their salawat in time. How many times do we, uh, you know, all of all of us, and I ask this question to all of us, how many times do we feel that when we're at school or when we're at work, you know, we sometimes feel scared that it's time for salah. There's no excuse for us, but we want to delay it because we are afraid of who might see us, who might see us that we're, who might see us praying. Subhanallah. And so many of us are like this, yet we see that guarding, being mindful of Allah, one of the most important aspects of being mindful of Allah is to guard our salawat and to offer them in its proper time. So brothers and sisters, next time that something happens, maybe you're at school, you're at college, you're at work, and the time for salah comes, remember this hadith. It is a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His mercy, that if we are constant in guarding our salah, Allah guarantees that, that we will enter paradise. So this is something that if, if this thing can't motivate you, then subhanAllah, seriously, we really need to you know, pause and think that what's wrong with our hearts. Also, from being mindful of Allah, so guarding, we understand the, aspect, we understand the importance of Tawheed. We understand that being mindful of Allah also means to guard our salawat. Then the third thing, what being mindful means, is that we have to preserve our organs, our ears, our eyes, our hearts, our limbs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَلَا تَخْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ And do not follow that which you have no knowledge. إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, the hearing and the sight and the heart of each of those, each and every one of you, will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. So definitely, what we hear and what we see, what we feel, 
where where our desires are taking us what are we looking at and what are we hearing whether it be you know filthy things on tv on the internet or listening to the voice of iblis meaning music or following things without any knowledge we just very you know we want sometimes what happens is we want to be religious which is a very good thing but then we we don't verify information. Oh yeah, so and so said something, let me just go do it without verifying it. Is this really from the sunnah or is this a cultural thing or, or what is it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask each and every one of us. And the first thing that Allah mentioned in this ayah, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Don't follow things without knowledge. Gain the knowledge first. Find out what's the right thing. That you want to do something Islamic. Find out if, first of all, if this is actually Islamic or not, and if it is, how to perform it in the right way. So, we have to be very careful. We have to guard our organs, our eyes, from looking at haram things, and use those eyes to look at things that are good, to verify information. Open the Quran, look at the Quran, look at the hadith uh, of the Prophet. ﷺ. Look at books that will benefit you in the akhirah and in this life. Look at lectures that will benefit you, hear lectures that will benefit you, and things like that. Do things, use these uh, organs that Allah has blessed you with for the good. Don't destroy yourselves, guard them. Uh, we'll be right back after a short break and continue on with uh, the next aspect of being mindful uh, of Allah. The Knowledge Trivia Question of the Hour In his book, al to Wasatiyah, this Muslim scholar, Rahimahullah, says, from Iman, faith, is acceptance. Iman of what Allah has ascribed Himself in the Scripture, as well as what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascribed to Him. This creed prevents tahrif, any attempts at altering the sacred text, and rules out ta'til, stripping Allah of His attributes, or taqif, asking questions concerning their modality, that is, ascribing a howness, or tanthil, attempting to understand them analogically. Who is the scholar who made this statement? Stay tuned for the answer to the knowledge trivia question of the hour. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa mahaba bikum. Medina Educational Institute is an online Islamic university built for today's students. MEI is redefining the way good, sound Islamic education grounded in the Quran and authentic Sunnah is taught online. Our methods will allow the student to learn at their own pace, creating their own schedules to make balance in work, family, and studies with greater ease. Our teaching staff are trained to go into detail and depth with each course given to allow a more concise and strong understanding of the information given to them. Our fees and tuition are competitive with other online Islamic universities with the availability of scholarships for the financially strained as well as those students who thrive and excel as students in regards to grades, attendance, and character. Learn Islamic knowledge based on the Quran and Sunnah at depth from your home or office and at your own pace. Learn Aqidah, Fiqh, Sirah, knowledge of the Quran, the Arabic language, about sex, social aspects, current affairs, and other areas of Islamic knowledge in detail as taught by qualified teachers. We seek to graduate students of knowledge, imams, teachers, dua, who can transfer the knowledge they learn to others, inshallah. Our independent study program means that registration is always available. So embark on your journey as a student of knowledge today by visiting us at www.medinaedu.com. Again, that's www.madinahedu.com. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And now, the answer to the knowledge trivia question of the hour. Shaykh Ul Islam, 
Ibn Taymiyyah. Welcome back. Uh, we had stopped, we were discussing um, the first piece of advice uh, to Abdullah ibn Abbas about being mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. And we had mentioned that being mindful of Allah first and foremost means learning about Tawheed, knowing the true meaning of La ilaha illallah, then uh, guarding ourselves against the prohibitions and guarding ourselves, making sure that we fulfill the obligations. And the foremost obligation is guarding the salawat and guarding our organs, our hearing and the sight and our hearts. And the next thing is the preservation of our chastity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who preserve their chastity. Uh, and he, it's a command. Uh, like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِظَاتِ وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا The men and women who guard their chastity and the men and women who remember Allah a lot, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward, meaning paradise. So being mindful of the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the characteristics of the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His description of the believers says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ And those who guard their chastity, meaning their private parts from illegal sexual acts, except from their wives or what their right hand possesses, for then they are free from blame. فَمَنِ ابْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكْ But whoever seeks beyond, beyond that, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Then those are the transgressors. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Those who are faithful, faithfully true to their trusts and to their covenants. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ and those who strictly guard their salawat, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ These are indeed the inheritors. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Who shall inherit the firdaus, which is the highest level of paradise? They shall dwell therein forever. So this concept of being mindful of Allah, brothers and sisters, can never be overemphasized. We have to be mindful and guard our faith, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Tawheed. We have to guard the most important action, the most important aspect or symbol of Tawheed, which is to bow down and prostrate, to make ruku'ah, to make sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, which is the salah. And to guard our limbs and, and, and our body parts from falling into that which will destroy us. So being mindful of Allah, it is a protection for our soul as well as our bodies. Because that's what we have. As human beings, Allah gave us a soul which of course doesn't die. And the ruh, the full explanation of the ruh of the soul is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the bodies, Allah gave us these bodies in this life and we know... Um, it comes to an end when we die and then Allah recreates our bodies just as it was whether to give us paradise or uh, you know we seek refuge in Allah uh, from the hellfire so when you are mindful of Allah when you are constantly mindful of Allah it is food for definitely your soul and is also food for your body it will protect you and when your soul is satisfied stress will not get to you. You, will, you won't lose your mind at, at any problems that you face or things that happen around you. And when your body is protected from the haram things and you guard your chastity and you guard your organs, your body will remain strong and healthy to continue the worship of Allah. And the more you worship Allah, the more mindful you become, the more healthy your soul remains and the more healthy your soul is, the more fresh your heart and mind remain. So subhanAllah, you see this connection, but it all starts with being mindful of Allah. 
So he says, be mindful of Allah, yahfazka, and he will protect you. This statement of the Prophet wasallam means that what, whoever guards the limits of Allah would be protected by Allah. The reward of a deed in most cases is the same nature with, with the deed itself. And that's something that we tend to forget. And the one who causes us to forget is none other than shaitan. The Qur'an is full of examples of this nature. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَوْفُوا بِأَهْدِي أُوفِي بِأَهْدِكُمْ And fulfill, your, fulfill my covenant, meaning your obligations towards me, so that I fulfill your covenant, my obligation towards you. What is that? What is our covenant with Allah and what's His covenant with us? Our covenant with Allah is that we will not worship anyone other than Him. We will do as He commanded and we will stay away from what He prohibited. This is our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to fulfill our obligations. His covenant with us, if you meet these requirements, meaning uh, stay away, staying away from shirk, and guarding yourselves from what is prohibited and doing the things that what has been obligated, then His covenant with us is paradise. So if we guard our covenant with Him, fulfill our covenant with Him, He will fulfill our covenant, His covenant with us. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Therefore remember me, and I will remember you. So make the dhikr of Allah. Remember Him by praying, by making tasbih, by making tahleel, tahmeed, takbir. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tongues and with your limbs. The more you remember Allah, Allah will remember you in return. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرْكُمْ If you help the cause of Allah, Allah, He will help you. Allah doesn't need our help. Allah doesn't need to be remembered. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether people remember Him or don't, whether they help His cause or don't, whether they fulfill His covenant or not. So don't let shaitan ever make you think, and this is what happens to a lot of people, that maybe Allah needs us. No, He doesn't. It's from His rahmah that He informed us, or He gave this information in such a manner, that all you have to do is fulfill your commandments, your obligations, and I will give you paradise. If you remember me, I will remember you as well whenever you call on me. And if you help the cause of Islam with knowledge, with wealth, with, with your physical efforts, help propagate Islam, help propagate the sunnah, and Allah will help you whenever you are in trouble. So these are things that have been mentioned to us to raise our status and to open the door for us to receive the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next thing that the Prophet ﷺ said, that, اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ أَمَامَكَ Be mindful of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. So when, you, when, we, when someone guards the limits of Allah, that person will find Allah aiding, supporting, guiding and protecting Him. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ Truly Allah is with those who fear Him, who have taqwa, and those who are muhsin. They worship Allah as if they see Him, but even, that, even though that is not possible, they know that Allah is constantly seeing them. So the people of taqwa, the people of ihsan, those who reach that level, Allah is always with them. Qatada rahimahullah who was a student of Abdullah ibn Abbas uh, from the Tabi'un, from the second generation, he said that whoever fears Allah, Allah will be with him. And who, whoever Allah is with belongs to a group that will never be overpowered, a guard that will not sleep, and a guide that does not fall into error. Subhanallah. So you see that when we feel as if we lost all hope. So there are times when you will feel that you don't have anybody with you. Nobody understands you. Nobody wants to listen to you. Uh, and nobody wants to help you out. Whatever it may be. You feel lost and you feel completely lonely. Know that 
if you work on your taqwa, if you work to improve on your iman, then definitely that lonely feeling, that lost feeling will not be there. Allah will be with you. And Allah will help you. And you will feel that sense of protection, that sense of a divine company with you. Allah will send, you know, Allah will put peace in your mind, will put peace in your heart. And Allah will surround you with people who are good Muslims as well. They truly will understand the meaning of brotherhood and sisterhood and, and, and things like that. They will come to your help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is... Now, this, uh, this issue of ma'iyah, that Allah being with a person, is of two types. But inshallah, we'll have to go on a, on a short break and we will continue on with that after we return. MEI presents KTL Radio. Talk radio for Muslim youth striving to learn and implement the sunnah, reminding you to unlock the blindfold, opening the mind so you can see that knowing the ledge, the knowledge is key and critical to achieving everlasting bliss and eternal happiness. KTO Radio. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every believer, whether you are a male or a female. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in a hadith collected in Bukhari, مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُثَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ وَإِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمِ When Allah wants to do good to a person, He blesses him with the understanding of the religion. And verily, knowledge is obtained by learning. Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us greatly by making knowledge easily obtainable by means of internet, CDs, retreats, cassettes, you name it. If we look back at the time of the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, we see that they would travel for days, if not months, in search of knowledge. Subhanallah, look at Imam Bukhari rahimullah. He was so eager to compile a hadith with proper chain of narrators and the exact wording Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he would travel thousands of miles just to complete or hear one hadith. Look at the companions like Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and his eagerness to protect the deen with an iron fist. Look at our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She was in her teens when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. Yet she narrated the second highest amount of hadith after Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The eagerness to obtain knowledge was something astonishing subhanallah. I want to address my sisters in Islam. Allah, his deen of Islam, has honored, has honored us in high regards. He honored us as daughters, sisters, aunts, wives, and most importantly, mothers. Our role in nurturing and teaching our children, our siblings, our friends, start with knowledge. And how else will we be able to succeed in this honorable gift if we don't even know the absolute basics of our deen? With that being said, I am pleased to announce a way to learn your deen from experienced students of knowledge and shuyukh who are passionate in bringing Islamic education to you in the comfort of your own home. The institute, which is called Medina Educational Institute, is comprised with a vast list of courses essential to every Muslim. So whether you want to advance your knowledge in the Arabic language or understand who your creator is in great detail, 
Or maybe you are a new Muslim seeking for an easy curriculum to follow so you will be able to learn the absolute basics of Islam and inshallah be able to further it even more. Medina Educational Institute is the right institute for you inshallah. For more details on courses offered, tuition and fees, scholarships and more, I encourage you all to visit medinaedu.com. That's www.medina, M-A-D-I-N-A-H-E-D-U.com. Welcome back. So we had started with the the next sentence and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, advice, اِحْفَضِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ أَمَامَكَ Be mindful of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. And we had mentioned that al ma'iyah that Allah being, being with a person, can be, it can be in two ways, specific and general. The specific can be found in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He has given us uh, quite a few examples throughout the Qur'an. Like for example, when He said to Musa alayhi salam, قَالَ لَا تَخَافَا إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى Fear not, indeed I am with you both hearing and seeing. And as Musa alayhi salam said, قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعِيَ رَبِّ سَيَهْدِينَ No, indeed with me is my Lord, He will guide me. And this can also be found in an incident in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he and Abu Bakr was and this is the hadith in, in Sahih al-Bukhari. When they were stuck in the cave and the, the people of Quraysh that were looking for them, they were right above them. It's, and Abu Bakr was like, you know, that's it, we're going to be caught. Uh, as Abu Bakr uh, was saying that I was with the Prophet wasallam in the cave. When I raised my head, I saw the feet of the people. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, if some of them just looks down, they will see us. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr, Ya Aba Bakr, ma dhannuka bithnayni allahu thalithuhuma. O Abu Bakr, be quiet, for we are two and Allah is the third of us. So this ma'iyah, as indicated in the story of Musa alayhi salam, as mentioned in the Quran, or the hadith about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr, requires Allah's assistance, Allah's support and protection. Uh, Alright, and, and this is a specific. The general ma'iyah requires Allah's knowledge, awareness and observation of the human deeds. So that entails instilling Allah's fear in the hearts, in our hearts. Like for example, Allah, regarding the general ma'iyah, Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَى أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Have you not seen that Allah knows whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is on earth? مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ There is no najwa, secret council of three, but he is the fourth. وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ Nor of five, except that he is their sixth. وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعَهُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كَانُوا Not of less than that, nor more, but he is with them, where, with, with his knowledge, wheresoever they may be. ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And afterwards, on the day of resurrection, he will inform them of what they did. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Indeed, Allah is the all-knower of everything. So this is in terms of knowledge. This is the general ma'iyah. That Allah is with us at all times. Even if we are alone, whether we're with another people or group of people, whatever it may be, Allah is always there in terms of knowledge. He can hear and see everything that we say, do, think and what not. Presence, the specific presence is when Allah gives us assistance, direct assistance, support and protection. And the general presence is that He is there at all times, listening and seeing our every statement and action. So the Prophet ﷺ continues, 
تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة Get to know Allah in prosperity and He will know you in adversity. Such a beautiful statement. So what does this mean? When a person fears Allah and preserves the limits and rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease, by and by doing these things, he has gotten to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there now exists between this person and Allah a special recognition. So Allah will recognize this person at the time of difficulty by responding to his call or supplication. Like for example, we all know the story of Yunus alayhi salam. He was swallowed by the whale uh, and, and then, you know, he, he submitted to Allah. He made the, you know, this is the famous dua that we learned and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. This is from the sunnah. That when you are struck by calamity, say the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. That la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu minal zalimeen. There is no deity worthy of worship except you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I have been from the wrongdoers. And there is no specific amount of times. Uh, you will find sometimes in some cultures, in some countries, they tell you, you must say this 124,000 times and such and such will happen. No, that's a bid'ah. The Prophet ﷺ did not specify any number. So you repeat this phrase, this dua of Yunus ﷺ as many times as you want uh, while you are in that state of, uh, of hardship. So anyways, and then we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued him. And because he used to remember Allah much at the time of ease, and Allah says in the Qur'an, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ if you, if he had not been from those who glorify Allah, لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Then he would have stayed in the belly, in that belly of that fish, in the belly of that whale. Then indeed, he would have remained inside its belly until the day of resurrection. So just because he was a prophet of Allah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to happen just like that. He, he was from the musabbihun, those who used to remember Allah and glorify Allah. They knew Allah when they were at ease. So now he is in trouble, he is swallowed, he cries out to Allah, he proclaims Allah's oneness, he repents to Allah. These are the things you're supposed to do. You admit your faults, you turn to Allah. Uh, proclaim his oneness, make a may he made sajda to Allah, meaning you offer your salah. Do all these things when you are in trouble and Allah will surely recognize you and help you and bring you out. SubhanAllah, just imagine. Here's a human being who got swallowed by a whale. How would you expect, you know, uh, even in this day of technology, we can't even comprehend this, that SubhanAllah, a human being got swallowed by a whale, but still Allah rescued him. Because this was a person who used to remember Allah. He knew Allah when he was at ease. So Allah knew him when he was in, in some type of hardship. The opposite. Like look at the example of Fir'aun. Who not only disbelieved in Allah, but he persecuted those believers, those people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, at the moment of distress, he expected rescue. But of course we know that Allah didn't rescue him. Why did Allah turn him down? Because he did not remember Allah at a time of ease. So definitely Allah wasn't going to help him at the time of difficulty. Like for example, when he was crying out that I believe in the ilah of Bani Israel, Allah replied, Al-ana wa qad asayta qablu wa kunta min al Now, now you're proclaiming this? When your soul is leaving, uh, is coming out of your throat, that's when it, he was at that moment of drowning and his soul was coming out. So he was crying out, help me. You know, he didn't want to die at that moment. I believe in the ilah of Bani Israel, whatever they're believing in. I submit, وَأَنَا مِنَ muslimin, And I'm from the Muslims. But Allah replied, Now, while you have refused to believe before and you were one of those people who used to spread mischief across the earth, so all of a sudden, now at this moment of death, when your soul is coming out, you want to, 
you know, you want to be helped. It doesn't work that way. So brothers and sisters, we have to learn that no matter what problems we face, wherever we are, if you want a solution, if you want a way out of that problem, and, and imagine, and, please, and be honest, and please be honest with yourself, no problem that you have in your life today is bigger than Yunus alayhi salam being swallowed by the whale. Maybe you have problem with your kids. Maybe you have problem with your parents. Maybe you have problem with your spouse, your friend or something. But that problem is not bigger than the problem of Yunus alayhi salam. Yet Allah rescued him from that type of situation. Definitely Allah will rescue you and rescue all of us. But the point is we have to get to know Allah first. Get to know Him at the times of ease and He will definitely know us uh, and remember us when we are in hardship. And this is the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And whosoever has the taqwa of Allah and he keeps his duty to Him, he will make, Allah will make a way out for him to get out from every difficulty. And Allah will provide from him, from sources he could never even imagine. SubhanAllah. And this is not, this ayah, this promise from Allah is not just for the anbiya. It is open to every single human being with the condition, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ as long as you are able to work on yourself and attain the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will provide from you from sources that you couldn't even imagine. And, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us about the opposite case. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ And be not like those who forgot Allah and He caused them to forget their own selves. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ those are the rebellious disobedient to Allah. And you look at all these youth in these Western countries or even in Muslim countries who want to imitate. They left their Muslim Islamic identity and they want to imitate uh, these athletes and, and, and singers and actors and actresses. They, they want to walk like them, talk like them, be like them. And, and over here, like for all the people of the different cultures, you know, they are, they are confused. What, what do you want your kids to be? Do you want them to be Pakistani? Do you want them to be American? Do you want them to be Egyptian? Do you, and basically what happens at the, at the end, these kids are confused. They don't know what they are. They don't fit in properly with the, uh, with the non-Muslims because regardless of how much, uh, you know, how much he fornicates or drinks, you know, Muhammad is always going to be known as a Muslim. And regardless of how much she dresses naked and flirts around and this and that, Fatima is always going to be known as a Muslim. So they don't really fit in. And then they don't fit in with their parents because their parents are more Pakistani than Muslim or more Egyptian than Muslim. So they're lost. They, lost, they forgot Allah and Allah caused them to forget their own selves. They don't know what they are anymore. So rather than being confused in this situation and then being in more distress when some calamity befalls us or when you have some personal or social problem, we have to turn to Allah. Recognize your Creator. Recognize who Allah is. Get to know Him. He wants you to know Him. He is there. He has revealed all the information. All you have to do is open the Qur'an, read, you know, listen to lectures, ask people who, whose job is to teach. Get to know Allah when things are kind of easy, or even if it's a little difficulty going on right now, get to know Him. So guard His limits, and He will be with you in terms of the specific presence. He will protect you, and He will remember you. So with this, uh, with this we will stop here for today, and inshallah continue on with the next part of the hadith, next part of the advice uh, in the next show. And we're going to take a small break, and after we come back, uh, Insha'Allah, you can ask your questions, uh, that any questions that you might have through our Facebook page or the Twitter account, because that makes it easier. Uh, and we will try to, uh, you know, uh, answer as as many as we can. And uh, and if for any reason we don't answer all the questions related to the show, Insha'Allah, I will make sure that at least 
I answer uh, in writing back to you uh, uh, before next week. And now, for an MEI reminder. What is easier, to climb up or to climb down? Obviously, climbing up a mountain or a hill is harder than going down a hill because of gravity. Paradise is up and requires that you climb to get there, but Hellfire is down, not needing you to climb, but rather is easy to reach. That is why the Hellfire is always referred to as being close, such as when the Quran says, This is the fire which you used to belie. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhama bikum. I am Ali Boriki and I am your new headmaster librarian for Medina Educational Institute. What we provide here at Medina Educational Institute is a virtual online campus library. In this library, we offer a vast array of works from Arabic to English and even to other languages as well. One of the coolest features of our virtual online campus library is that we had developed our own Islamic card cataloging system which helps us, the faculty, and you as the client to identify and locate these particular works. And another interesting feature of our virtual online library is that I will be offering and facilitating introductory videos for all of you. And an example of this would be, for instance, any one of you who decides to learn Hadith. Well, in the science of Hadith, there are prerequisites that you have to learn. For example, there is the issue of Adab al-Rawi wa Adab al-Sami' which basically turns out to be the etiquette of the one articulating and narrating as well as the etiquette of the one who is hearing, basically the student. This is necessary for a solid foundation from which and by which the student can actually progress to further and higher studies. And again, I am Ali Boriki, your new headmaster librarian for Medina Educational Institute. Inshallah, we will look forward to see you at Medina Educational Institute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. MEI presents KTL Radio. Talk radio for Muslim youth striving to learn and implement the Sunnah, reminding you to unlock the blindfold, opening the mind so you can see that knowing the ledge, the knowledge, is key and critical to achieving everlasting bliss and eternal happiness. KTO Radio. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا Alright, so inshallah we'll stop here for today. Uh, hopefully you brothers and sisters enjoyed and you will keep on uh, tuning in. And as I had mentioned, uh, on my Facebook page, inshallah, we will be adding more shows with other speakers and shuyukh. So just be patient with us, inshallah. This was our first show, um, and I, I sincerely ask all of you to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward all the brothers who are involved in this project. And may Allah make it easy for us to uh, keep this ongoing. And, you know, we need your support uh, in any way you can give us support, especially with dua. And, and again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the brothers and their families who dedicated their time to uh, make uh, such a project happen. Uh, so with that, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully you brothers and sisters have a good week. And uh, inshallah, we will meet again next Saturday, same time, same uh, same situation, same place. So assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MEI and WKTL Radio presents Know the Ledge. Remember, the more abuse you receive, the more dedication you show in defiance.
Do not allow the people's games to succeed. Because if you change to their liking, you will lose your identity and then you will become depressed and sad. So instead of feeling distressed at people mocking you and hindering your path, laugh at their abuse and tell them, Thank you. You are helping me become even more strict on the sunnah. We look forward to seeing you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا السماء شقت وأذنت لربها وحقت وإذا الأرض مدت وألقت ما فيها وتخلت وأذنت لربها وحقت يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقي فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا وينقلب إلى أهله مسرورا. This has been a production of MEI and WKTL Radio. For more information, please visit our radio page at www.medinaedu.com. And remember to follow us on Twitter at WKTL Radio.